do we, was morning tea satisfying? Is the catering been okay? Yeah. If you have any complaints or whatever, please let me know. If there's never enough vegan or all that kind of stuff, let me know indeed. All righty. Now, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we move on to our little special guest. I don't think I've got my form. Um, those of you who have requested to do a video testimonial, we're going to get stuck into those at lunchtime. Um, so I think we've got about nine or something to get through. So if there are any, anyone else that has decided, you know, what, I am ready to do it. And remember, we'll interview you. We'll guide you through it. It's not as though you've got to go, oh, my God, what have I got to say? We'll help you. And then we're going to edit it to make sure, you know, if you make a mistake or a boo-boo or whatever, who cares? We'll just edit that bit out. Out, okay. So please be relaxed about it. Please be cool about it. And if you do it and decide you don't want us to use it, then let us know. We'll just cross it off the list and say never use. Okay. So please don't stress about it. Um, so if you want to register, please make sure you just go to the desk with the girls and we'll make sure we put you on the schedule to get that done. We'll do those at lunchtime and hopefully the last few we'll try and do in the, in the break this afternoon and get them all done for you. So you get your free videos. All right, I'm going to introduce you to the most amazing woman. My business wouldn't be where it is today if I hadn't had Annie by my side. Um, she is an inspiration to me. She is one of my mentors, um, both on a business level, on a social media level as well. Her understanding of the human psyche and, you know, I can understand it on a therapeutic point of view from a marketing perspective and his knowledge and her dedication to studying that over the last kind of five to eight years, really, where it's, it's become very serious for her. It's actually become an obsession. Yeah. She's absolutely obsessed with social media, with Facebook, with understanding the human psyche and how they spend, what makes them buy, what makes them feel motivated and moved to take the next step. So I'm going to let Annie, Annie introduce herself formally and without further ado, the beautiful Annie Ography, Annie Murray. Thank you. Ooh. Wow. Hello. <laughs> I'm Annie Murray. I'm an author <laughs> of Booked Out, Valued and Paid. What is it? A, an online marketer and an online course creator. <laughs> Can I just say about Annie's book, even though it's been written for photographers to get booked out, valued and paid, what do we want as practitioners in a clinic basis? Once you get to know what Annie does, it might be worth picking up a copy of the book too. You literally just remove the word photographer and put in therapist, etc. It's exactly the same because people are predominantly very similar. So, hi, I'm Annie and let's get into it. I'm going to have to sit. I've been quite unwell for a little bit. Anyway, the rules of the game have changed. Social media has changed the way that we advertise and communicate with our audience. People's attention are fragmented. They're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're on um, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Twitter, whatever it is, everything. At the same time, they're also watching the news, they're watching YouTube, they're talking to the kids, they're doing the cooking, they're at work, they're hiding from the boss that they're in the toilets watching Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> they're reading video. So to get somebody's attention is the most important thing these days because there is just so much happening. Um, the main reason why is there's never been so much information out in the world before and we are distracted by everything. Recent studies show that in the past it took about 15 days for someone to get familiar with your brand before they would purchase um, and now it's up to 22 days and 32 touch points before your brand is recognisable to a point where they'll spend money with you. Think about that for a minute. So when you have a trip to the supermarket, 
on average, you're looking at about 18,000 brands and the marketing messages that come with them. So in an average human day, they're saying that we're exposed to about 8,000 marketing messages. So our brains are really good at deleting 99% of that information. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir when we talk about <laughs> the mindset and stuff. Um, and the brain only lets in what's actually relevant to the person at the time as you know. So to break through that marketing spam and get to people's brains is what we have to do or they will not spend money with you because they simply don't know you exist. And if you're the best kept secret, you can't access their money. So this is what I hear the most. I've tried Facebook ads and they don't work for me. Who's done some Facebook advertising? Who's spent some money on Facebook ads? Who's had success with those ads? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Fantastic. Congratulations. A lot of people will spend some money on ads. They put up an ad and they put 20 bucks behind it a day or $10 or $5 and they start to dream about the millions of dollars they'll make. You know, sitting on a beach under the umbrellas and <laughs> sipping margaritas, put the ad out and what happens? <laughs> Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And pretty much it's like turning up to a first date in a wedding dress. <laughs> you have to schmooze people. You've got to date a little bit. Let them get to know you. Ask them questions. Find out about them. And make them feel like you actually are interested before you get them to spend money with you. It's exactly what we're doing at the three-day event here today with Maggie. It's the exact reason we do webinars online. It's the exact reason we have a free group. And if you're not using that feature in your own business, you're standing at the altar with the bouquet at your first date. So stop it. <laughs> date a little. Don't be that girl or oh boy. <laughs> we get things in our heads like we must be too dear or no one values photography, therapy, Replace that word with anything. My area is flooded with other therapists. How many people think that? Who's going to come to me because there's already so many people? No? It's big with photographers. Um, there's no money around. I live in a low socioeconomic area, things like that. They're all stories that aren't actually true. There is a market for everyone. You may not just have learnt to communicate with them yet. So let's change that yet. Oh, can we have the lights out, please? I'm just going to play you a little movie so you can see what I do and hopefully you feel I do it well. <laughs> and... Go. And this is the reason I was always booked out 12 to 18 months in advance. So perhaps we're off for a photo shoot today. How are you feeling? Good. Just good? Yes. What else? Mm -hmm. Great. What else? Um, nervous. Why nervous? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> you know what it's going to be like. Yeah. I feel excited and nervous too. The lovely thing about today was seeing mum more than just a grey-haired old lady. I mean, she's lively and she's happy and active, but she's never in the spotlight and she's never want to ask for anything. So it was really nice to see her receive today. It's going to be lovely to have some photos that are more than just mum and her. I was going to say more than just mum in a cardigan, but like she has got photos taken today in a cardigan, but they have beautiful um, sequins on them. It's her cardigan, which she hardly ever wears, and she had a beautiful story about where she got it. She bought it with her sister, who died, you know, numbers of years ago now. So I'm so glad that she's going to have a photo in that cardigan. Mum's a woman. She's more than just mum. 
She's a woman who for the first time in 58 years is independent and single. She's a woman who has a beautiful loving family around her. She is creative and funny and energetic and athletic and beautiful. I think I got to see mum as a woman today. Not just as mother and grandmother and Anzac biscuit maker. I think that's what I'm going to remember about today. Seeing mum as woman. And I got to see Claire just before her 50th birthday. Really see herself. See the dynamic, beautiful woman that she is. Strong. Independent. There's a photo she sort of got one eyebrow raised just ever so slightly, and it's so clear that mix of soft and strong. So Pops came along and had the most beautiful day dancing around in chul <laughs> and having her hair done and just playing. It was just beautiful, and she is just so beautiful. And Annie allowed her just to shine in front of the camera. Audio jump. First time that Annie showed me the back of the camera, I was so critical. She got me to close my eyes and take a couple of deep breaths. And when I opened my eyes again, I didn't see Annie and I didn't see the camera. I actually saw Matt. And I just looked at him with love. When she showed me the back of the camera again, oh, that's what I got to see. A woman full of love. Thanks, Annie. You look a pretty schmick with your curls, there, Pops. Thank you. What was the best thing about today? Um, probably be posing. Posing. That fun? Yes. What about the tutu? Very hard to sit down. <laughs> Can everyone grab their phones, please? Oops. Pick them up and turn your torches on. And I want you to hold up your torch. Finding my torch. Turn your torch on and hold it up. So if we think about this room like Facebook and we think about all of the people on Facebook that are lost, that are feeling like they need help. Sorry, my legs are shaking. I have to sit down. <laughs> um, they're waiting for you to shine your light. And unless you step up, and you start being active on Facebook and showing them what you can do, they'll never find you. So today, for me, it's all about you shining your light. Wow. Are you ready to shine your light? Yes. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It was actually beautiful. Actually, can you do that again? I want to take a photo. <laughs> oh, wow. And smile, yay! <laughs> Thank you, that's gorgeous. I wish you could all see it from up here. Alrighty, because there's people out there waiting for you. They're waiting for you, they need help. We're all a little bit, and thank you for saying the first F word, we're all a little bit fucked up in our own way. <laughs> so they need you. You've got skills that they don't have and you have to share those skills. How many of you have thought about having a photo shoot with your mum before? How many of you are thinking about having a photo shoot with your mum or a loved one now? Only one, come on. <laughs> there should be at least 10% of the market. <laughs> no, well, I'm not, but I've got photographers all over the world who are, yeah. So turn up your lights. So before I found my marketing message, I was working so hard. I spent way too much money on stuff that I look back now and think, oh my God, I could have had another 50 pairs of Louis Vuittons or something. <laughs> I was working too hard for every dollar. I didn't understand what marketing was. Even though I grew up in business, I won the best photographic store in Australia in 2002. 
um, I still didn't understand what great marketing was. And now that social media exists, um, I had to work it out. And I pretty much had a cross your fingers and hope sales formula, which didn't work really well, especially as a photographer. I had people coming to look at photos and then having to go home and think about what they were going to buy. They had to measure walls and things like that. And generally it was because I was giving way too many options. So when Maggie talks to you about simplifying your price list and things like that, listen because they don't want choices. We're making choices all of the time. There's too many things to think about and if they have to research your price list, they're focusing on the wrong thing. All that matters is how you can help them, okay? So make decisions for people. If your message and offer and your client avatar, I call it perfect client, if they're not right from the beginning, <laughs> your marketing message will fall on deaf ears. You will not connect with anyone if you're trying to talk to everyone. That's why I knew about 10% of the room would maybe put their hands up having a photo shoot with their mum. I didn't expect 100% of the room to want that. About 10%, maybe it's only 5% if you really niche down. The more clear you are in your language and your message, the more magnetic you become and the more people you attract. As soon as you generalise and try and talk to everyone, thinking it's actually um, counterintuitive. We think that if we're broad, I can help you know everyone, whatever problem you've got, you'll be ignored. But if I can help, you know, uh, a big girl, oh, sorry, um, love her body again. Like, I don't want to lose weight. I know what I should be eating and what I shouldn't be eating, but I want to feel sexy every now and then. I want to like me when I look in the mirror. That's the kind of language that you must use. Don't tell me what I should do. Tell me how I'm going to feel after I work with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, the foundation work is absolutely critical because if that message is skewed, you will not. Um, floodgates has opened for scammers and Maggie mentioned this on day one. If it's not authentic, if it's not real, people smell a rat from a million miles away. Don't be a rat. If you don't know your shit, learn your shit. You can learn it, you know, whether it takes you 20 years or two years or two months, up to you. But don't say something if you can't follow through. Um, Switch your thinking to helping them. So instead of trying to sell people, you're simply trying to help people. And that's what makes you magnetic. The minute you start to sell, you become just like everyone else, trying to sell something. So how many people go onto Facebook to buy stuff? Look at that. There's not one person in this room on Facebook to buy stuff. How many people go on eBay to buy stuff? How many people go to Google or your favourite store to buy stuff? How many people go to Instagram specifically to buy stuff? We're on there to be entertained, educated or to feel an emotion. We're not on there to buy stuff. So stop, stop selling, have conversations with people. That's what they care about. Okay, how do I know all this? Really quick story. The first time I posted on Facebook, I had a big studio in Horsham with six staff. We were really busy all of the time. I was working about 20 hours a day, six and a half days a week, and literally killing myself. Um, I met Darren, fell in love, and instead of him moving to Horsham or me moving to Bendigo so we could be together, we decided we'd both move to Geelong and start a new life together. When we moved to Geelong, my shoulder was worn out from the years of lifting the camera, so I had to have shoulder surgery. I closed my studio in Horsham, moved to Geelong, have the surgery, have three months off, and then open another studio in Geelong. Two and a half years later, I could get out of bed again. It was a very long, horrid journey. Two and a half years later, everything had changed. Back in Horsham, I'd put an ad in the newspaper. Now there was a thing called Facebook, which I had never used before. That whole two, 
two and a half years in bed. I never knew it existed. I didn't want, well, I didn't care. I knew it existed. I thought it was about seeing what people had for tea last night and the kids are in the bath while I'm cooking spaghetti. Didn't give a rat, so I didn't want to know about it. <laughs> and then when I came back to work, I had no money, obviously, with a couple of years off unplanned. Um, I thought maybe I should give this Facebook thing a go. So I got my son around and I put... I'd crashed, obviously. I looked in the mirror. I'd gained 20 or 30 kilos during that time. I hated myself. And I thought, how can I be a glamour photographer when I look like this? Who the F is ever going to want a fat person photographing them? And then I thought, well, maybe, just maybe, I'm not the only girl in the world who feels this way. So I put a post on Facebook. I had 72 followers on my page at the time from my staff's stuff that they were posting two and a half, three years previously. Nothing for two and a half years. And I thought maybe I should just try. So I got my son around. He took a photo of me and I thought maybe I can just find five people in Geelong who has 300,000 people, just five women. Maybe if I could just find five women who would let me photograph them, I could show people what I can do. Oh, I'll talk up. Is that better? Sorry, I was being feeling and I start to get a bit. <laughs> um, I put that post on Facebook saying if I could just find five women who feel like me, I'd love to give you a photo shoot and I'll do your hair and makeup if you just trust me and maybe let me share your photos on Facebook if you like them. I turned off the phone, I threw it under the bed. I looked at Darren, I said, I need chocolate. <laughs> now. <laughs> so we went to the supermarket and we went and had a look at a couple of homes and things to take my mind off it. And I thought I was humiliating myself. Like I was bawling in the car thinking, oh, what have I done? I've just ruined my life, how embarrassing. I got back to like 72 missed phone calls, 300 messages. Um, and over 400 people applying to have those five photo shoots. Over the next couple of days, it became thousands. It went mini viral from 72 likes on my page. I found, I gave 10 shoots away in the end. And most photographers around the world have an average sale of about $500. These women that trusted me to take their photo and I was looking for bigger women just like me, because they were my perfect client. I knew who I was talking to before I knew all this smart stuff. Um, they all spent three and a half thousand dollars even though I was gifting them some of their photos. It was phenomenal. I said that wrong. Anyway, I was then unable to recreate that result. I was booked out for 18 months doing that and the work that I was showing, I was getting more bookings. I then had another little break because I wore myself out again. See a pattern for me, don't you? Um, <laughs> and when I came back, nothing. I'd post, people would ignore me. Oh, no one likes me, it's all past. What have I done wrong? I became obsessed with why was that so good? What was gold about what I was doing before? And why couldn't I do it again? So I became obsessed with how do I do that again? And spent a gazillion dollars studying human behaviour. I, I find the best people in the world and I pay them an extraordinary large amount of money to show me why it works and how it works and just became obsessed and have kept studying and trying and everything I do is a test and I'm just so addicted. So I can look at a business page for everyone, anyone now and write an ad and we've got so many results um, and, yeah, completely changed my life. Obsessed with copywriting, the position of the words, the tone of the text on a sales page will determine whether you make $2,000 or $200,000. It's that simple. It's so cool. <laughs> I've sold well over a million dollars with my own online course. I help photographers with marketing and sales, not photography anymore. There's a lot of people doing photography. My new passion is marketing. Um, three and a half thousand, I just thought it'd be handy if I listed my products so you could see what I'm doing. So three and a half thousand dollars for a seven week online course with 12 weeks of group support. I go live in the group a couple of times a week. Um, after that three months, if they want to stay in the group for the continued mentoring, it's $99 a month and about 40% stay. Um, I want to empower people to leave. 
So my goal is for them to leave, but some people need extra. Um, I have a $5,500 three-day retreat, which is all about marketing and sales. Um, I used to do a $3,500 workshop where I would teach people how to shoot in the Finding Your Beautiful style. Uh, sorry, I did a film called Finding Your Beautiful, which went viral worldwide. It's had nearly a million views and probably about 10,000 photographers messaging me saying, how the hell are you getting clients and getting paid? And that's why I became a mentor at the start. Um, author of Booked Out, Valued and Paid. My son is officially the number one funnel designer in the world. He works for Russell Brunson himself, um, Nicholas Kumich, who's one of the biggest Facebook marketers on the planet, and I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> <laughs> when I did my first course and learn about a funnel, I rang Chris, because he's a graphic designer, and I said, Chris, can you come and help me with this funnel thing? Um, and he came around and he had a look and he said, oh, Mum, I don't know about these funnels, they're a bit dodgy. No, 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 everyone's using them. Like whenever you put your email address in and get a free PDF download, you're entering a funnel. Does everyone understand that? Yeah, yeah. So they're being used everywhere. It's like a website that you give you. Can I add to something you. to that? I was very, very lucky because I know Annie who knows her son. <laughs> Some of the funnels I'm going to show you later on were designed by Annie and her son. And as she's just said, Chris Murray is now the number one funnel designer with Click Funnels. Yeah. Internationally. And we've got a beautiful photo of him last year. I know you're so proud where oh, he's got the, he's with, with, with Russell Brunson and he's got his million dollar check, which is the, um, the, the first million he made for another customer with one funnel. Wow. Yeah. It's so, so, and he's now done have, that numerous times. Yeah. But. Click funnels have um, the two comma club award. So any funnel that does a million dollars, um, they give an award. It's like a gold at album record thing. Um, and Chris has got quite a few of those now, but his consumer funnel was a $27 plastic ice scraper that you take ice off windscreens um, and they did over a million dollars in 26 days. Marketing, 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 marketing. Um, and I wrote one of the ads. <laughs> I've personally spent over $70,000 of my own money learning Facebook ads, putting ads out there for myself. So when you're looking at hiring someone to do Facebook for you, how much of your own money? Like they'll tell you about the money they've spent for their clients. Does not matter. How much of your own money have you spent learning this stuff for yourself? Because I could stand here and say that I've spent millions of dollars. Um, and if I added Christopher, we've spent probably over $500 million on Facebook ads for people and other companies. Um, but my own money, because that's when you really work shit out, when it's your own bucks. Yeah. So $70,000. Um, I've got a Facebook group with um, almost 3,000 photographers. I can generate $80,000 with a one, a one hour live in that group. And I've done that um, many, many, many times now. But like Maggie said, I don't do it that often because I don't want to be sell, sell, sell. I'm in there helping people all of the time. Does that make sense? I've just had the last six weeks off Facebook, completely deleted off my phone. I've not spoken to anyone. Christopher's in my groups looking after people and stuff. But if you went to my group today, you'll see that I haven't posted anything for six weeks on my page, nothing. And I'll just pick it up when you're better. So don't feel as though you're married to Facebook. People are so busy, no one's even going to notice that I haven't been active, you know? on my public page. No one cares, we're all busy in our own lives. So there you go, that's me. Um, started with a couple of eBooks and then my real book. Um, I'm spewing now, I didn't get Maggie to, I didn't want her to read it in case I wasn't good enough and she wouldn't be my friend anymore. <laughs> that's the truth. Um, yeah, I kick myself now, but yeah, she kept saying, let me help you. No, 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 it's okay. I'm too stupid, she'll laugh. Anyway, 72, Post on my page, that was how I looked. That's the photo I used. And I said, sorry, if you could see the rest of me, I'm gorgeous. That was taken <laughs> about five years beforehand. Um, and I said, because I wouldn't ask you to do anything that I won't do myself, I'll show my before photo tomorrow. And that's when it really exploded. So do you always have to be polished and beautiful? This is what they connected to, her, not her. So 
Um, okay, let's go through some Facebook fundamentals. Any questions before I keep going? No, let's cruise. Um, the rules have changed. Oops, we've done that, sorry. Um, people aren't on Facebook to be sold to. We've actually talked about that. So we need to capture their attention. What do people love talking about more than anything else? You're already there. <laughs> so why Facebook? A lot of people say, you know, using YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, blah, blah, blah. When I went to my first course and learned about funnels and Facebook marketing, social media and all of that, I actually went home and cried and I thought, can I be really blunt? Yeah. How the fuck am I ever going to have time to poop? If I have to do Instagram, Facebook and all of these other things and blog and websites and SEO and all of that, I just was so overwhelmed that I just thought I should give up. And then I just thought, well, why don't I do one and do it really well? So I love Facebook. Humans are the same. It does not matter if you're putting it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Human behaviour doesn't change, just the technology does. It's no different to sending a letter and licking a stamp years ago. Okay? So um, Facebook knows every single thing about you. Every click, every when you buy a new car, when you get a new job, who your friends are, who you talk to, who your relations are, how do they know all that? You tell them. There's bots crawling over every single post. You might have, look what I got today, and there's a brand new Red Master in the background. The bots will pick that up and you'll start getting new car ads in the next three to five years because they know people update their cars in three to five years. Everything we tell it, where we are, where we're checking in. But they also, creepy as a individual, very creepy, fantastic as a business owner because they know everything about your customer as well. So very, very exciting. Um, if you use Facebook the right way, you can have 250 people, fans of your page and have a multi-million dollar business. So don't be caught up in the illusion of I've only got 72 Facebook likes. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, with a very low following if you're engaging and entertaining and interesting. If you're not entertaining, interesting and engaging, you'll have no action on your posts. They'll go nowhere, they'll do nothing. Now this isn't me telling you you're boring, it's your audience telling you you're boring. They don't want to know about you, they don't want to know about your business and they certainly don't care what you're having for lunch today. They want to know how you can help them. So ask them questions. Be entertaining and engaging. Um, yeah. Is that what you mean by using Facebook the right way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just asked, is that what I mean by using Facebook the right way? It's not on there for a self-promotion selling platform. It's about entertaining, making people feel things. So give them... I've got a breakdown later of the kinds of things you should be posting. Um, everyone on Facebook is there to just hang out to escape. So um, just a couple of, there's I think nearly 3 billion people, 7 billion people in the world, 3 billion of them are on Facebook. Um, it's still double the following of Instagram and things like that. Generally, if you're on Instagram, you're also on Facebook, same with LinkedIn, all of those things. So it's still by far at least double bigger than any other platform. Um, 83 million fake profiles. The average time spent on Facebook is about 35 minutes. So they're looking, aren't they? Um, a Facebook post at 7pm will result in more clicks than average posting at 8pm. Go figure, just that hour of extra time. I actually find that an early morning post will get shared more than what a late at night post will. So depending on what you want to happen, try all different times of the day. A lot of people think, oh, there's most people on at 9 o'clock at night. I'll post then. By the time the, the algorithm finds what to do with it and who's going to like it and who to show, they've all gone to bed. So don't fall into that trap of looking at, you know, when your audience is on and posting then. Post hours before they're all on. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, just some more stats. 350 million photos are uploaded to Facebook every day. That blows my mind. 350 million photos. 
Um, this is an older graph, but you can see it is still growing. Even the Facebook um, security stuff that they had last year it's still increased. So um, everyone is just there and it continues to grow and they continue to make more money. Why is Facebook so damn popular? And it's pretty much, I worked out, because they've trained us to do everything else individually. So you're on LinkedIn to only talk to other businesses. You're on um, YouTube to watch video only. You can't read a blog on, on YouTube. Um, Twitter, it's limited characters of text. Instagram, images only. Facebook is the only platform where you can do everything. Facebook groups are one of the most powerful ways to connect in the world. And even when things like security scams and things like that happen on Facebook, sorry, not scams, but leaks, um, people will stay because of the power of the groups and the community that they feel a part of. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I get very intense and very quiet. <laughs> um, people will always stay on Facebook because of the power of those groups. Um, does everyone know how Facebook actually works, how the algorithm works? Do you want me to quickly show you? Okay, this is my very simplified. Um, there's normally not an IT expert sitting in front of me. <laughs> cool. So when you post, Facebook will look at that post and they go, okay, Jenny and John looked at Annie's page last week and they connected with her. She's posted again today and because there have been recent connections, we'll show that post to them first. Depending on what they do, we'll determine on who Facebook shows next. So if neither of them do anything, they will say, well, let's try these people who engaged yesterday and see what they do. If they do nothing, the post pretty much stops. End of story. That's so why you a get. Really dumb question for somebody who doesn't. No, no, no. Facebook. So you're saying that if I hang on two seconds, oh, here it comes. Sorry. Just remember, I don't do Facebook. <laughs> so you're saying that if you load a post up, that Facebook determines where it goes to. The algorithm does, absolutely. So it doesn't just sit there and waiting for people to connect with the people that you know. No, that it show goes people. beyond who you yep. know. About 1% they'll show. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, so if you've got 100 followers, only one or two people are going to see it for them to determine whether you're interesting or not. Facebook decides because it's based on the previous behaviours. It's not, it doesn't just detect. There's a few other parameters, but I'm, yeah, simplifying it. But say it shows my post to these three people. Now, they like it, they comment on it, and maybe one of them even shares it. So when you get a share, sorry, my knees are... Um, it's almost like the office at Facebook, you know, the balloons drop from the ceiling, the party poppers go, the streamers are released. <laughs> Because then they'll start going, holy shit, and he's really got something to say today and that it's interesting. Facebook want to keep your news feed really interesting because they make money if we keep coming back. So if they put boring shit on our feeds, our customers don't come back. So they're actually doing us a favour because if we are interesting, interesting and engaging, we get shown. So if that's shared or if that's commented on, oops, sorry, how do I go back? <laughs> sorry, I'll just have to do this for now. They'll then show more people and if they comment and share and like, they'll show more people and that's how things go viral, okay? So the more interest, the more interaction you have. Have you ever seen anything viral with no likes or comments? It can't go viral because there's no likes and comments. So that's a really basic of how it works. Question? Um, Annie, when people just are scrolling and they just uh, like it and they don't comment and they don't share, uh, what does the algorithm think of that? <laughs> um, if they like it, it'll show other people. Because Facebook also know... Um, I just can't see play from current slide. Present a view. Thank you. I've got my glasses on. No, it's still doing present a view. Can you, Maggie, can you? 
walk someone, <laughs> please. What do you want to do? I just want to do slideshow, play, <coughs> show slide show. Yeah, but yeah. without the stuff oh, okay. on the side. You keep talking. Okay. Um, so yes, if they like it, Facebook will know whether people are likers or commenters or sharers, and that's important to know when you start doing paid ads you get to tell Facebook whether you want to get in front of people who are more likely, do you want to go this way? More likely to just like it, whether you want engagement or whether you want comments or whether you just want people who watch videos. So is, is engagement just ticking like or is engagement uh, sharing and commenting? Like doesn't actually register these well, days. Yeah, this is what I'm wondering. Yeah. So if people give it a heart, um, that's Facebook will then recognise that. So right. instead of saying, you know, people like it, you have. if you ask for likes, you generally won't get them. If you say, give me some love, your friends will, your mum will. Um, <laughs> but if it's interesting and engaging and people will like it, they'll love it. You don't have to ask them to. They will because well, how, that's what they're how trained How do you to do. get people to move from that to commenting then? By yeah. being engaging and interesting. I'm going to show you a bit yeah, of that okay. later, soon. Um, okay. So there's also a scale on how hard Facebook push it out to your audience. So just a plain text post with no image, they'll kind of go, hmm, she's not really trying today. They'll show a few people. If you put text and an image, a few more, you'll get lots and lots of there. Meaningful conversations is what they want. They actually want people to spend less time on Facebook, but the time they spend to be more meaningful. And at every stockholders meeting and presentations and that, you'll always see um, Mark Zuckerberg, I nearly forgot his name, talking about meaningful conversations. So they want businesses to have meaningful conversations, which means if you schedule all of your posts, Facebook know that you're not there, that it's all scheduled. <laughs> They're not going to push it out. But if you're there to talk to people, they'll push it further. Okay, the only thing that breaks all of the algorithms and goes incredible is live. They're still pushing live really hard. They eventually want to take over YouTube and be the number one video watching platform in the world. So they're still pushing video a lot. The only thing better than live video is live with interaction. So when people jump on your lives, you'll see their name come up. Talk to them, ask them questions, get them answering you. Like, give me a one if you're having a great day, give me a two if you're having a shit day, or give me a three if, you know, you're home in your jammies and dancing around while vacuuming. Like, talk to them, get them really interacting, and then your lives will be pushed further and further and further out. The real exciting power of Facebook is the targeting. And nothing on the planet beats the power of targeting. Sorry, there's my little ad that was meant to be at the start. Of course I think of a lot of you, Maureen, but this is our second date. <laughs> Maureen's looking a little desperate. Um, so Facebook, they know where you live, who your relations are, um, what sort of education you have, whether you're male, female, married, single, separated. And we generally tell that information by changing our relationship status and things like that. So when you're originally joined, they ask you your education history and all of those sorts of things so they can connect you with people who are similar that you might know from school. But it gets better than that because they know what kind of music you like, what kind of videos you watch, if you watch cooking stuff, if you watch mindset stuff, um, what sort of demographic your home is, your ethnicity, who your friends are, um, what political, I think in Australia that doesn't actually work, that's more America. Um, marketing business, whether you're a luxury traveller or a budget traveller, all of those things, they know everything. Again, really freaky as an individual, when you're paying for ads and you want to get in front of luxury travellers, that's exciting, really, really exciting because it's people who love to spend money. 
Are you, are you all with me? Yeah. Can you see where I'm going? <laughs> um, of just what sort of car you drive, what sort of mobile phone. You can advertise just to iPhone users. You know, when you buy a new iPhone and you'll get all these ads of, with new iPhone cases, they're clicking that box to only show this ad for iPhone cases to users on an iPhone. Um, everything, travel, mobile devices, purchase behaviour, whether you use your credit card online or not, they will know everything. The value of your home, all of those things. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for the mic. Hi, I just, want, I just wanted to ask you, uh, even like having audio on that they can hear when you're in conversations with other people? There's bots listening. It's not people sitting in a room listening to our conversations. Um, yes, because, well, officially I don't know and I don't think anyone really knows the answer to that unless you work for those companies. Do you know? the? Uh, I, it, have to assume that everything is everything's yeah yeah everything yeah. you say everything you do is recorded yeah because if you're talking about a cruise you know yeah. three hours later you get a cruise ad up on your feed or even quicker than that yeah yeah <laughs> so you assume um but it's it's not people sitting there listening yeah and unless you're uh, gonna bomb somewhere I, like I'm not hiding anything I've got nothing that they would be interested in. I think they'd be bored out of their brain <laughs> listening to me. Uh, but it's it's interesting. Like I'm in a financial institution, and um, the, like they they track everything that you do. If we if we use a word such as legit, it's legitimate. Every email, every communication that we have gets uh, scanned for fraud because it's a, it's a trigger word. So really? yeah, it and so they've they've got things running all the time. And so. It's interesting with the amount of information that gets done. It's something now like 60% of all transactions are done computer to computer. Yeah. Humans yeah. aren't even involved anymore. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm having a menopausal hot flash. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. The thing, it was our son well, would have been about four years ago, three or four years ago, when Snowden came out, the movie Snowden. Yes, yep. And he then realised how much is being watched all the time. And about three days later, it was my birthday, and Google actually came up, happy birthday. Yeah. It knew what, what my birthday was, and, and it uh, factored the, the landing page of Google for me to celebrate my birthday, I think. Yeah. Scary, but that's, that's where we are. So Google was able to say happy birthday to me before Amanda did. <laughs> Amanda, lift your game, darling. <laughs> Uh, hers was a little bit more poised last <laughs> All right. Now, we had a conversation yesterday, which I loved whoever asked the question about, oh, I'm a great researcher, why would I pay anyone to, to learn a course? Um, so I, when I was being rude with not listening to Maggie, I went into research mode myself, and I thought if you type marketing into Google, there's 12 billion, 520 million results. And like, it's off the first wouldn't you rather just give someone a couple hundred bucks and <laughs> that spent yeah. money on their own ad account? Um, and there was book authors, 12 billion, so many million, all those sorts of things. All right, let's get into the real guts of this, of how you connect with your audience. So generally I get my students to interview people who are more likely to be their perfect clients. So if they're a family photographer, they're going to interview families, not singles, things like that. So it's critically important that you understand everyone better than you know yourself. You have to be able to step into their shoes. Now, if I had men photography, photographers photographing women, because they aren't in their heads already, they have to do more interviews. They have to get deeper into a woman's head so they can understand how we really feel. And if we keep it at a level of, oh, yeah, I feel great, I'm having a great day, how much is that going to connect? But, you know, when I look in the mirror and I don't know, like what I see, I haven't liked myself for 20 years. 
Now we're talking to real people's feelings and if they feel that way or if they look in the mirror and they're really proud of their body because they've worked really hard at the gym. You know, there's both. It's very clear who I'm talking who I'm talking to. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> hey. <laughs> So when I, when I post to Facebook, this is how I see it's just a crowd of people. Would you walk into this room going, hello, I'm a therapist and I can help you and I can help you and I can help you. What's your problem? Would you like me to help? What's your problem? You just wouldn't end, introduce yourself that way. Exactly the same as Facebook. So out of this crowd of people, I want to talk to her. Okay? I want to talk to her, him, her. So now I can use my page to get around people like her because of the type of language that I use. Her friends will share it if they see it as being something that she'd be interested in. But when I'm paying for ads, and we'll talk about that this afternoon with Shenny, I can pay just to get in front of those two people. So the narrower targeting on your niche, you can spend... Say there's a million people on Facebook in Australia today or in Melbourne today. I might want to only talk to 12,000 of those. So at a dollar a click, if I'm broad in my targeting and I'm talking to a million people, it's going to cost me a million dollars, right? Dollar a click, a million people. If I'm talking to 12,000 people at a dollar a click... Now I'm spending 12000 talking to only the people that may be interested in my product. Can you see the power of that? Who wants to donate a million dollars to Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Me neither. So <laughs> um, We need to know their name, the age, what they do for a living, what's your income, their marital status, their neighbourhood. Now, this perfect client doesn't actually exist. It's the kind of person you love working with, okay? It's not a real person. It's a figment of your imagination. So I pretend that I love working with nurses. Her name's Michelle. Um, she earns around $120,000 a year. She's married. She's got kids. She lives in a neighbourhood about 10 minutes out of the city. Because the language I'd use to talk to Michelle, who lives near the city, very different to the language I'd use if she lives on a farm. Okay? So for the girls here doing food and things like that, like you can target vegans. Why talk to meat eaters and steak lovers? Why give them your money? You probably won't change their mind with one ad, especially if they don't know you. Yeah, so... So in the past, all the demographic information is how marketers and advertising companies usually worked. It's heaps sexier now. Facebook has done something that's never been done before in the world. We can now get into the psychographics. We now get in front of people based on their food choices, based on their beliefs, whether they're religious or not, who they vote for, how much money they earn, whether they travel luxury and stuff like that. It is the most powerful. Can you tell that I'm excited by this? Yeah. And if you're not excited, I'd have to ask you, are you allergic to making money? Yeah. Like, does anyone here not want to make any money in the next 12 months? <laughs> so get excited. This should be music to your ears. Um, because now you can talk to people who only care about what you want to make them care about. Um, if you don't know what your market wants, how do you talk to them? You can't. You've got to know how they feel, how to connect, what sort of opinions they want to give you. There's no point asking about what vegetable is their favourite if they're steak eaters. Ask them about what's their favourite vegetable recipe and they'll happily share that. Can you see the difference in that? Get them talking about themselves. We all love it more than anything else. Now, Maggie will send out these slides to you as well with hers. So we give you access to all of that. Um, you have to know what frustrates them. You know, so maybe you talk about the salt content in food if that's something that you teach people to be aware of. Maybe it's 
you know, they feel like that if they're hypnotised, they're going to walk around the streets clucking like a chicken every time they hear a car horn. So I would be doing posts about, you know, um, have you ever wondered if you're going to cluck like a chicken after you've been hypnotised? Like, and have a photo of a chicken. Have some fun with what you do. Don't be serious about it. People are on there to be entertained. Connect with them in a way that inspires and makes them giggle. I always think about how do I make her laugh today? How do I make her feel today? How do I connect with her? And I get all of this information from the interviews that we do. How are we going for time? Okay. Good. Um, You'll use this information, you gather lots, at least 10 interviews with people, you write down everything they say because the nuances of their language will be different to ours. So as photographers, we talk about aperture and f-stops and all those sorts of things. There's no way a client's ever going to message me and ask me what aperture I shoot in. It's just not part of your language unless you're a photographer. So you must talk about, you know, hypnotising in the way that your customers, your clients talk about hypnotising or massaging or whatever you're doing. Um, if people, a lot of people go through the process with us um, and our clients want to book us because they realise the importance of having photos. I do this for my non-photographic clients as well when I'm working with big companies and stuff um, or small companies. We've got to get in there but quite often they'll go, I just want to book you. These interviews cannot be the old switcheroo. You know how they get you, suck you in with something? So if a client wants to book me after doing these interviews, I say, look, I'd really appreciate if you'd call me back tomorrow and book in because I don't want it to be a part of this question thing. So just be very aware. You don't want anyone saying, yeah, but you sucked me in with an interview. So very different to, you know, your surveys and stuff. This is a lot deeper. Um, how long have you? So for us, how long since you've been photographed or when's the last time you had a baby? Baby photographs, probably never. Family photographs, 10 years, 20 years, one year, three months, whatever it is. So however long since you've had a massage or have you ever had therapy? Have you ever been hypnotised? Whatever, you fill in the blanks and listen to the answers. So the interviews are really important and once again I'm speaking to the choir. Um, you guys know how to listen rather than talk because you're listening for the, the answers. Why did you decide then was the right time and ask it in any way that fits your brand? You need to know what happened for them to decide to take action if they have. Of course, you wouldn't ask it if they've never been hypnotised or never had a massage because they haven't made that decision. But if you can nail down that one trigger when someone decides to pick up the phone, you can then start talking about that event in a way that entertains and engages people to make that decision to pick up the phone and contact you. Does everyone follow that? Yep. yep. What is stopping them? So if they haven't had your type of service before, why not? That question is probably the most important because if you want new clients, you have to understand why they're not. So for photographers, most people don't come because they don't like how they look. So we need to understand that. And then in my posts I say, you know, have you ever looked in the mirror and not loved the woman looking back at you? Well, with only an hour of my time, or an hour with me, you know, let's change that. If you could put into words what you'd want to see in your life, and you'll see that I've got C in pink, because now we want to know what they see, what they feel, Oh, and I've left the last one off. Mm. <laughs> it's me memory. <laughs> See, feel and remember. You've got to get into their brains. And then you can use all of that language, having conversations about it. You've just, after these interviews, and there's 12 questions, and when you've got all this information, you've got a posting plan for a year 
with all of the answers that you get from these interviews. Who would like to know, never again have to worry about what am I going to post today? Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. yeah. So see, feel and remember, yeah. And then the last question is, who do they follow? Where do they spend their money? Where are they hanging out online and offline? So if I'm a counsellor for children and families and things like that or a therapist, I may want to start shouting out to the local trampoline centre and tagging them in my post so I'm getting in front of more families without actually saying, come buy my stuff. Yeah. Do you want to buy my stuff? Do you want to buy my stuff? Would you like to buy my stuff? Hey, I've got shit for sale. Do you want to buy my stuff? <laughs> it's awful. Like, how many of you would buy my stuff? It's terrible. But, hey, you know, like, we've been down to the trampoline centre today and the kids had an amazing time. Shout out to Jolly Jumps Tramps. And now people who are following Jolly Jumps Tramps are probably going to see that post. And I've supported local business and I've shown gratitude and I've proved that I'm a great person to be around because I'm happy. Can you see how all of this comes together in a beautiful little cycle? Yeah. Yeah. People only spend money or time with people that they know, like and trust. Have you ever spent money with anyone that you don't know, like or trust? But did you look, research them a little bit? Go to their website? No. Right. You must have really trusted that person. Yeah. 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 I was going to say that's where the trust came in. The trust came in from the person who recommended it. So you actually knew the recommendation through the trust of the person that was recommended. So it was still about you saw somebody on based on trust. Does that make sense? They didn't follow through, of course, and let you yeah. down. But the decision yes. to pay the, pay the money came from a place of trust. Yeah. I've also spent money out of desperation because we just make sure we keep our questions on the microphone, otherwise they won't appear on the... I've actually spent a lot of money out of desperation because people are so good, some people are very good at selling themselves and they promise you so much and they're convincing. In my desperation that I want to be, you know, out yeah. there and, and do the service. So, yeah. Results, testimonials, you need to see their results. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if they've got no results, you need to ask more questions before you hand over your money. I work way too hard for my money. I'm not prepared to just throw it away. Does anyone want to throw it away? The Annie Fund is available and open. No. <laughs> All right, so your perfect client avatar comes together like this, and I'm happy to give you guys a copy of the perfect client avatar through Maggie, um, just to give you a really brief outline. So this goes hand in hand with your, um, I call it core statement. What did you call it, Del? Contribution, contribution statement. statement. Um, goes with contribution statement hand in hand. So if you do um, ever decide to employ a marketer or someone to do your social media posting with your contribution statement and something like this, they'll know exactly who you're trying to talk to and what you want to say. So really important, whenever you get absolutely nothing on your page, if people aren't liking it or, you know, engaging with you, come back to here and just get clearer about who you're talking to. These kind of things get updated every six or 12 months, okay? Don't get stagnant. Update as you go. Ridiculously great marketing is what I call the video that you saw before. And the reason I call it ridiculously great marketing, because it had nothing to do with me. It was all about my clients and the results they got, okay? So whenever you find yourself talking about yourself too much, you won't get connection. Even on my website, so I'm consistent with my photo, as you can see, you get to my website within half a second, you know if you're in the right place. 
okay? I help photographers that are struggling with marketing and sales to become booked out, valued and paid. So that's my core business. Even though I've got a marketing agency on the side now, um, I've never had to look for a client. It's all referral based, so I don't even have a website <laughs> for my marketing agency, which is crazy. Um, then I connect, you're a photographer. It's not about me, okay? Because I use the same image on all of my marketing, there's familiarity, that word, but <laughs> familiarity, um, that they know that they're in the right place, okay, and then I'm talking to them directly. It's all brand aligned, five minutes, thank you. Um, you can see my funnel, it's all within my brand and how it looks, um, lots of information. Maggie will go through in heaps more detail about where things need to be placed and if you've got one thing out of place, you'll never have a sale and you'll wonder why and it's not because your funnel doesn't work or Facebook marketing doesn't think, it's just you haven't understood how copywriting, how powerful the copy is. Testimonials. I have thousands and thousands of testimonials of people's lives that I've changed. They might have been earning $15,000 a year or $40,000 a year and now they're earning $100,000 a year or $150,000 a year being a photographer that they never thought they could live that dream. So testimonials are inc incredibly important. Um, people will do anything if you encourage their dreams, justify their failures, ally their fears, confirm their suspicions and help them throw rocks at their enemies. Very famous. And if you Google Blair Warren, there's a, um, I think it's a little three-page PDF. It's free. You're not allowed to sell it. And it has this statement and it explains exactly why. And if you do nothing else today, download that and you'll be on your journey. This ties into the four pillars. And the reason the four pillars is so important in your business is any good business anywhere in the world, whether they are aware of it or not, are operating on these four pillars. This information cost me $30,000 to learn with one mentor. If you have desire, trust, credibility and no value, people won't buy much, they won't come back. You'll never see them again if they don't feel as though their time was valuable that they spent with you. If you have desire, trust, value and no credibility, they're not going to become a client to start with. If you have desire, credibility, value and no trust, it makes me think of the sleazy car salesman, they're not booking, they're not buying anything. If you have trust, credibility, value and no desire, they're not coming. You have to create desire. The only way you can create desire is by talking about how they're going to feel afterwards. Yeah. And excite. Because if you're not excited about your business. Actually, yeah. Annie, can I get you to go back to that previous slide and just spend, we can get to go for an extra, because that's a really important slide. Oh, it is. Let's yeah. go for another five minutes on that one, because right. I think this is actually really important for you to get in your communication to your clients. So I think if we can just linger on this yeah. a little longer, we'll go an extra hurry. few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the most important thing out of the four, I mean, they're all and they're taught at 25% each. Um, desire for us as photographers, and I believe the same for you guys as therapists, like people aren't going to come to you if they don't want something different in their life. True? If they don't want to feel better in some way. So you have to create that desire by telling them how they're going to feel. If you put an ad out that said, you know, you're miserable now, and after you unload your wallet with me and give me all your money and you'll feel miserable afterwards, <laughs> How many people are going to book you? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> so you have to say, you know, if you feel miserable now and you're sick of feeling that way, maybe I can help. Yeah. Um, trust and credibility. Your credibility, if you have um, awards and things like that, diplomas, whatever. I have year 10 education, Zippo, that's it. Um, I don't even have a degree in photography, completely family born and bred photographers, etc. Um, 
it's all self-taught and I've spent a lot of money, thank you, with people, you know, smarter than me so I didn't have to start from day one. So always look at where you want to be, look at someone who is there and follow their path because they've worked out all the hard shit and they'll save you years and years and years of trial and error to do it yourself. Has anyone got any questions of how you'd relate this into your business? Yeah, down the back. Uh, thanks, Annie. I'm finding this really fascinating. Um, Great. Mine is a bit of a quite a personal question. Um, a couple of years ago, I was starting to grow a nice following and everything. And then a few things happened out there in the world that I had put on my social consciousness hat more. So I changed my name on Facebook and I was very opinionated about quite a few topics. And it's still there now. And then I stopped doing all my professional stuff because I know that it's controversial. So... Um, Currently, like if one does the research and find out the full information about vaccinations, it's really quite scary about what's really going on out there. So that's just one example. But I know to be a businesswoman that I might have to drop all that and the vaccination community is not my ideal audience. It's more like a lot of um, public awareness I was doing. See, so I will, my concern sorry. is yep. do I reactivate my Facebook page, get my, put my real name back on or start another one? Um, definitely I wouldn't start another one because you lose credibility if your page is 2019. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got a page that says 2007 or 2012, you've got more credibility that you've been around longer. I would embrace the fact that you're against vaccinations because there's a whole massive community who are against vaccinations that are your perfect clients. So if you feel that way, embrace it. They're not my people, perfect client. Yeah, uh, I don't, because when you have an opinion that's not the mainstream opinion, like the amount of people who unfriend you and really make really rude comments and take this superior moral ground towards you no. in private messages. Block and delete. And, Block and delete. But it's like an eye-opener to where the mentality of where people are at when all you've been doing is providing information that but may that's, be helpful. That's their journey. Mm. They're not interested in your journey. They're interested in theirs. Yeah. So if you just talk about your beliefs and um, in a way that's non-judgmental, I've got a slide just up here about... So I'll just do this and I think it'll answer that question. So I operate on the 80-20 rule and 20% of you and 80% of your posts should be about them. So maybe give alternatives to vaccinations and things like that rather than saying you should not vaccinate. You know, did you know? Give them a statistic. Give them other people's opinions as well. You'll attract the people who are wanting to be vaccinated. And the people, like I used to photograph big girls like me, and if we got, you know, some smart-ass comments every now and then about someone should stop eating Mars bars, block and delete. I've no time for dickheads on my page. <laughs> Block and delete. It's your page, your rules. <laughs> exactly. It, like, is it worth getting upset about? No, it's a stranger who has a dickhead opinion. Yeah. 20% should be serious and f deep feelings because you guys deal with a lot of serious issues. But you'll become hard work if 80% of your posts are deep and serious. Twenty percent should be long form. You can use a blog post if you want to use a long form post. Twenty percent should be shared other people's content. You don't have to create a hundred percent of your own content. Always credit who you're sharing it from or share it from their page. Um, Twenty percent with links. So don't always be promoting your website. You'll get less reach, less everything from Facebook as well if you have a link, but you need it 20% of the time for people who are going to want to click through to your website. 
stuff like that. Um, Just back on that Pixar link, yep. that link to storytelling formulas that I gave you yesterday on the, the PowerPoint, that actually has the Pixar um, storytelling formula on that as well. That's a great one. Cinderella, 80% of all movies are based on that formula. Yeah, it's a five-step formula. It's great. Um, be curious about everything. Every post I put on Facebook, I never think, oh, will they like me? Won't they like me? I go, oh, I wonder what they're going to do now. Like, will they like this? No, okay, let's try something else. I'm not hung up on the results at all. You have to remove yourself because if you're looking at Facebook to find friends rather than a business, you're looking in the wrong place, okay? Run it as a business person. Um, you're not trying to win friends. You're trying to gain people's trust and help people. Um, always be community-based, like support your local community because they're generally who your clients are unless you're running an international business. Shout out to other businesses. Show gratitude. Use emojis. Have fun. Um, empathy, not sympathy. <laughs> Understanding, not judging. So I would never post something <laughs> like, um, you know, if you vaccinate your kids, you're killing them or anything like that. Like that opinion... I wouldn't share. Like, I don't say to people, you shouldn't eat lettuce. Mars bars are the way to go. I think Kira said one day, you don't make friends with lettuce. You don't make friends with lettuce. <laughs> or salad. It's <laughs> a Is it? It was brilliant. Um, so social media is not business media and don't be boring. So as hard as the feedback is, if they don't like it, Maybe you're talking about yourself too much. So if it starts with I, me, we, and we say don't we, we, we all over yourself. Yeah. We just have the mic. So thank you, everyone. Has that been valuable information? Yeah. Fantastic. I'll take a couple of questions and then hand back to Maggie. Hey there, that's great. Um, what do you feel about your personal profile versus your business page on yep. Facebook? Because um, yep. I know in LinkedIn it's more about your personal profile than your business page. Um, um, how's it? Yep. I use my personal page 100% as a business page as well. I don't run my business from my business as, sorry, I don't run my personal page as a business page because I'd be deleted. Um but I only put out what I want the public to see. So I steer clear of um, rants and things like that. I'm always body positive. I'm never body shaming. Um, I know that most people will judge me. I find that I'm a little more relaxed, like I'll say the F word a lot more on my personal page, but I also use the F word on my business page because I want to connect with people who don't mind if I drop the odd F bomb because I'm going to. Yeah, so if people are offended by that, they're not my perfect client. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, that's great. Yep. Did you have a question? Yes. Yep. Um, the, um, the interview uh, for building a client avatar is perfect, really good. Yep. Um, how do you go about setting up an interview? Yeah, so it's one post on Facebook and pretty much it's, hey, guys, um, I need some help. Can anyone spare 10 minutes to answer a few questions for me? It can be that simple. You can just type in um, help into the Google search engine, have a look on images, <laughs> pinch an image that says help, like we have blackboard signs and things like that held up just to attract the attention um, or get a copyright free one. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not in any trouble. Um, being a photographer, that's probably the last thing I should have said. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not advertising with it. It's on the recording. <laughs> Delete that, Carlos. <laughs> I've got Messenger deleted, so. <laughs> oh, sorry. If I'm running my Facebook page correctly and doing all the right things, can I get rid of LinkedIn and Instagram and how much of the content that I produce for Facebook do I then need to transfer onto here and it's just too much. I don't even know how to log into LinkedIn or Instagram. Can I answer that one? Yeah. yeah. I have both and I believe that LinkedIn is a really untapped market. Um, so I've got a huge following on LinkedIn organically and to me... LinkedIn is more about business to business than it is social. 
Yeah. And so for me, developing relationships in groups and things on LinkedIn is actually quite an important thing in very targeted specific groups, of course. Um, and I don't do a lot on LinkedIn yet. It's I'm kind of just seeding it over this last probably three to five years. And I suspect in the next couple of years, that's just my little gut feeling that LinkedIn and YouTube's already going off. But I think in the in the next couple of years, I think YouTube um, advertising and stuff will get much more expensive and things as well. And I think it's still in its infancy, even though it's been around for a long time and it's huge. Um, but you can still get quite a lot from organically from YouTube as well. So they're my kind of little hot, little simmering things I'm I'm sitting and learning on over the, the next few years. So I personally, if you are going to sell business to business, as in therapist to other therapists or therapist to industry, I would actually maintain your LinkedIn profile as well. If you intend to sell or develop products or online courses for industry. Does that make sense? going to say completely depends on who your client is yeah yeah just to further support what Maggie said um, I always take the um, uh, theory that you fish where the fish are yes and uh, LinkedIn I've had many clients who are business people who are on LinkedIn but they're not on Facebook so they will come to me because they don't want to go onto Facebook yep. uh, because they found me on LinkedIn. I forget the exact number, but it's something like 87% of people with a LinkedIn account also have a Facebook account. Um, it might even be more like 97%. Very rare that they don't have both. Um, and I know like probably 7,000 multi, 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 multi millionaires on Facebook. So don't think that if they're a CEO or something like that, that they're not. doesn't matter whether you're the CEO or the janitor. Um, we're all people and most people are on Facebook. It is it's three times dearer to advertise on LinkedIn um, as well. So if you go where you the Fisher, agree, one hundred percent. Yeah, I must admit on that that is absolutely true. I have dabbled with a little bit of LinkedIn advertising, and I've got some incredibly good leads from it. But it cost a lot more than Facebook costs to get those leads. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I still believe that there's room, especially because I am, um, you know, probably 60, 70% of my business is actually industry based. So for me, I see that as an important market. Um, so again, if that's where your business is targeted, that's where your ideal client is, your avatar is, yeah. stay on it, develop it, connect with people. And I treat it the same way, exactly as Annie said. It's still, even though there might be corporates and there might be business owners or they might be um, high flying therapists or whatever they are, there's still people who sit on the toilet and do all the things that people do, <laughs> yeah? And so I still treat them and connect with them in as people a way as I would on Facebook. Um, I've got a couple of strategies that I use on LinkedIn that we'll talk about this afternoon when we do organic reach and we'll talk about, you know, articles and things like that on LinkedIn. I would do more article-based stuff on LinkedIn than I would do on Facebook. Yeah. I look at LinkedIn as... Every single person on LinkedIn has a business. It's like going to a networking event. We're all just there to sell something. And I'd rather stick pins in my eyes than be sold to all the time. <laughs> I want to have fun. Life's too short. But it depends on, yeah. And your personality, like Maggie's far more professional than I am. So <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I'm a bit of a rat bag and I love that about me. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> I just wanted to ask about um, how Facebook always comes about boosting a post. Yes. Yeah. Facebook make an extraordinarily large amount of money by people who are uneducated, and I don't mean offence to that because I used to boost as well, um, to people boosting posts. Yep. So it is more expensive generally yep. for people that boost because they're uneducated on the ads manager platform. Um, they want you to spend money. So it's just virtually for them, not any benefit to... Yeah. Um, without a strategy, you're throwing your money in the gutter. Yeah, you have to have a strategy, guys, because if you're random, you'll find it very difficult. And Shani will talk a lot yeah. more today about what, where we spend our money yeah. and whether we should do boosting mm -hmm. and... Targeting and stuff, yeah. 
Can you just explain why the huge long ads or emails or Facebook posts that advertise online courses, of which Maggie's was one, um, why do they, how do they work? Why do they work? I hate them. (laughs) I can't stand them. The only reason I'm here is because you answered the question about why it's free on that, which nobody else does. Yeah. So, but it's just scrolling through pages and pages and I just... Yeah. Um, Great question and completely dependent. Some people love the research and the stats and all of the information. I'm a just give me the facts and I'll turn up and work out whether I want to stay or not type girl. Um, It's you need to do both. So as well as having the long form, I'm sure Maggie would have had shorter ones as well. And it all has to do with retargeting strategy. Was there a video? Was it retargeted? Like, she's a smart cookie. She works with me. So I'm pretty sure there'd be some. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. I'm going to hand back to Maggie. Just on that, I normally use the long form post to tell a story. So if you um, actually did read the long form post, you would have seen that I talked about the burning out aspect of being a therapist, the reason why I now have an online business, the reason why I use books and online courses. And I took people on a journey through the high, low, high. Yeah. Where with my short form post, I'm targeting a totally different person. I'm targeting the person that just wants the facts, the figures that tell me where it is, tell me whether I want to go there or not. Let me look at the page and I'll decide. Um, And so I'm kind of targeting a different person with a long form. I'm targeting the person that needs the story, that wants to feel, that wants to experience the connection with me and know that I'm the person they want to to connect with. And with the short form, I'm targeting the people who just want facts, fixed, you know, give give me what I need to know in order for me to make a decision. Does that make sense? So I do both, definitely. We're going to break now. It is 12.27, so, oh, did you have a question? Or? It, it's in, interesting because up until Friday I didn't even know you. Uh, um, the reason I'm here is because somebody close to me was at, saw you at the AHA uh, uh, forum and so I booked in. And, and I was then received – so I'd already booked in, didn't know anything about you, but I was getting emails saying – about telling us about this forum and inviting me to book in. And I actually found that very frustrating because I'd already booked in and I was receiving emails saying, oh, this event's on, book in. And I'm thinking, is there a way where we can actually make the, 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 those sort of emails and communication smarter so it actually knows, okay, you're, you're an audience that would be interested in this, but you're already booked in, so why spam you even more? Absolutely. Absolutely, there is. And all good um, platforms that uh, hold your CRM, your your database, actually have that. And the person that programmed mine clicked the wrong thing. So people that were already registered got the um, recommendation as well. And so in order to stop that, it was in mid-cycle and it meant all of the emails would have had to stop. So I just took the, the path that I would actually send out the occasional one apologising for that, and you may have missed one of those um, because it was just in the middle of it. Yeah, it had to happen or I would lose the whole email sequence. And so sometimes technology can be cleverer than it needs to be, um, but in reality, yes, absolutely, there's ways to distinguish that. And we adapted the emails to say, you might have already booked in, apologies if you already have, um, blah, 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 for those of you that might want to invite a friend, et cetera. But yes, the, the systems like I use Active Campaign, which is actually incredibly clever and it's a great CRM, um, but it was just programmed. It's always human programming. Yep, exactly. But that, that technology is actually very, very good and I'd highly recommend if anyone is looking for. Um, there's many free, like um, MailChimp, you can have up to 2,000 uh, people on your list and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and so, and if you, you know, if, if you're only just starting out, I would highly recommend you do something like that, set up a free MailChimp account. But once you get to a stage where you've got a number of people on your list and you want to segment more, you want to be able to, um, really adapt 
your your messaging out to people. Something like Aweber or um, Active Campaign is really good. At the highest level, um, where you've got you know billions of billions of dollars and huge lists, then things like Infusionsoft are very good. I used to have Infusionsoft, but it's just very very complex for the level of business that I am still. And so I actually took it across to Active Campaign. But it still makes mistakes if it's programmed incorrectly. So let's break for lunch. So my apologies. <laughs> but you're still here at last, thank God. We will be back at 1.30. We've got our beautiful Shenny. Um, remember, those of you booked in for a testimonial, a video testimonial, please see the girls and Carlos. Um, we'll be doing those in the lunch break now. So let's get you scheduled in. And um, anyone else that wants to, register. last chance to register for that as well. And we'll see you at 1.30.